The uploader suite consists of three components, the controller, injector, and scenario builder. Start by downloading the uploader installation package from the product downloads page on the NRG Global website. Save the uploader suite setup.zip file and extract the contents of the file to a new folder. You will find a separate folder for each of three components, uploader, injector, and scenario builder. Within each folder is a setup file for its respective component. Install the components in the following manner. First, install AppLoader on a Windows PC or Windows Server, it doesn't matter which. This sets up the controller, which manages, drives, and monitors load tests, and the database which stores results and generates reports, graphs, and charts in summary or detail form. Next, install Injector on a Windows Server which is the environment that hosts multiple users injecting the load on the application under test. It should be noted that Injector can be installed on a PC, but a PC installation limits the number of users per Injector to one. A Windows Server with terminal services enabled allows AppLoader to generate multiple simultaneous users from a single Injector. Finally, install Scenario Builder on a Windows PC or Windows Server. This is the tool with which you build scenarios that interact with the application under test, exactly the way the end user does. For a complete guide through the installation process, please review the AppLoader installation guide available at nrgglobal.com. Before we move on, there are a few more things I want to mention. When installing AppLoader, you'll be prompted to provide a web server port and controller port range. AppLoader's controller can be accessed via a web browser, and communication between the controller and injector is through web services, thus the need to establish these ports. Choose the default ports unless they're being used by other applications. During injector installation, for the AppLoader base port, enter the same port that was used for the web server port in the AppLoader installation. Also, enter the correct AppLoader base IP address to ensure that the injector registers with the controller upon installation. The process is painless and intuitive, but don't hesitate to reference the installation guide should you encounter any difficulties. After you've installed the three components, you're ready to get right into testing. Double-click the AppLoader desktop shortcut and log into the controller. The first thing you'll notice is that the injector has registered with the controller. This is a good sign as it indicates that the channels of communication are open. AppLoader's Manage Injectors page is the place to create and start real users, or R users, as we'll refer to them from this point forward. R users are Windows local user accounts on the injector. They're used to simulate the end-user desktops that AppLoader utilizes for the playback of test scenarios. If your application only allows authenticated domain users, have your system administrator provide a CSV file containing usernames and passwords for AppLoader to utilize for scenario playback on the injector. In either case, creating R users is the first step in the test process. We'll create 15 incremental R users since our application doesn't require domain users. We'll name them R user and AppLoader will add an incremental numeric extension to each. Once created, R users must be started. This process launches the R user manager on the injector. The R user manager is a window that houses all of the R user sessions that are started at any given time on an injector. Started R users appear in the View Real-Time Results page of the controller, under the Connected heading. But they can also be viewed firsthand by opening an RDP to the injector. Here you'll get to actually see each R user session logged in and poised to begin playing scenarios. Join us for our next video in which we'll provide an overview of Scenario Builder and demonstrate how to send a scenario to AppLoader for inclusion in a test plan.